So we'll start the recording here with cosine. So this is example, part of example one, but instead of doing sine now, we're going to do what? The first one was find the exact value of sine of two theta. This is find the exact value of cosine of two theta, right? Yes, no, maybe so. Sleepy yes. people, Delgado. Yes, I got a yes. Yeah. We just woke up, Delgado. We're not even alive yet. We're like zombies. All right. You right. <laughs> So uh, let's look here. Cosine of 2 theta. So what is the formula for cosine of 2 theta? Sine squared theta minus sine squared theta. There you go, right? Cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta, right? Yeah. So they told us, just like we have the, the information now, we could just plug in the values. But in general, if we didn't have the information already, there's a triangle to be drawn and then find the information. So you already have what sine is and you already have what cosine is. So it's just a matter of plugging in and solving, right? But I'm going to go through it here, right? Remember, this would be our triangle based on the information that we have, right? Theta is in quadrant two. R is five and sine of theta, I'm sorry, the, uh, uh, Y is four, right? So we would find first find sine, put our values. We would have to then look for X. And how did we find x? We used the Pythagorean theorem, right? And we got that x is negative 3, right? So we know that that's cosine of theta is negative 3 over 5. We could plug that in. And from here, you can tell that the rest is just a little bit of math, multiplying fractions, applying exponents, and such. Hello, class. Yeah, me, class. Class. Bye. You want to say hello to my class? Fine. This is my daughter. She wants to say hello. Let me see where the class is right up for everybody up here. Say hi. Hi. See there? They're all they're all people with just names on them. Nobody wants to show their face. Here's Nicole. Look, there's Nicole. See, there's Nicole. She wants she wants to see all of you now. Everyone's like, oh, see, there's Jasenia. Say hi, Jasenia. Well, say, oh, there's Land. There's Land. Anybody else? Anybody else? Cheyenne, there's Cheyenne. See Cheyenne. Anybody else? Anybody else? Well, right now we have a low turnout, so we're pretty happy about that because we can talk a lot if there's very few of us showing our, our, our on the thing, right? I love your haircut, Land. Very cool. Thanks, All right. Mr. Is it thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm learning to speak this. All right. So that was my daughter. Back to math. Yeah. All right. So now this. So here you just apply the exponents and then we would have that and then simplify, you get negative seven over 25. Everybody okay with that? Yes, no, maybe so. Like I said, none of what we have yeah. left, this, none of what we have left this year is hard. Thank you, Jasenia. It's just, thank you, Roberto. It's just that it's all new, right? It's all new stuff that you just gotta apply. It's kind of like doing algebra again, except that you're doing algebra and trig together, okay? So none of it is hard. It just takes a little bit to start to remember these things. And the cool part is when you start to remember them and you don't even know how you remember those things. Somebody will say, oh, what's sine of two theta? And you'll start spitting stuff out and you're like, how did that happen? How do I know that? So that's the point you're gonna get to eventually. Uh, some of you are there already. All right, we're good with this one. Let's move on to the, we did sine, cosine, so we have to do what? Tangent. Tangent, very good. Tangent. Very good, tangent, thank you. Thank you, Jasenia and Lan and Roberto. So we have to do tangent now, right? So tangent of two theta, what was tangent of two theta? What's the formula? This tangent theta over one minus tangent squared theta. There you go, right? So it's tan two tan theta over one minus tan square theta, right? And school yourself has a they show you this and they show you where it comes from as well. It's kind of an informal proof, but it's a very cool way to see where these come from. 
So now it's just a matter of using the information that we have and applying it, right? We just have the numbers. If we didn't, then we'd have to do figure that out, right? But we know that tangent is gonna be what? Tangent is, that's where we get stuck, right? So the question is, how do we find tangent? Well, we could go if we didn't have the values already. Remember, we have the values already, so we can kind of cheat, right? Because tangent is what over what? Sine over cosine over cosine, right? Tangent is sine over cosine. So I can just plug those in. But looking at this, we had sine, that's the information we had already. And we also had what cosine was, right? So now to find tangent, hi Gretel. Hi. And then uh, now to find tangent, what do we do? Sine over cosine. What's gonna happen to the fives if we do sine over cosine? Gonna cancel. They're gonna cancel, good land. So I'm gonna end up with what, Lan? I've got four over three, and let me four see. Negative four over three. Negative four over three. Negative four over three. Those fives are gonna cancel, exactly. Those fives are gonna cancel, and I'm gonna end up with a negative four over three. So that's what's gonna end up happening to my tangent. Negative four over three, and that's what I plug in there. The rest is algebra, okay? And really arithmetic and some multiplication of fractions. Those are gonna start to get a little bit trickier. So if you're not quite adept at dealing with fractions, it's been a while, just get used to them because you're gonna be dealing with them all next year if you're going into Cal, okay? So just, if you haven't practiced those, you're gonna get a lot of practice in this uh, end of the year trig section. So that happens all the time, okay? Everybody good with that? We can move on. So we're here. Now it's just a matter of simplifying this, right? So in the numerator, I'm gonna have a negative eight over three. In the denominator, I'm gonna have a what? Uh, minus 16 over nine, right? So is that gonna be, it's gonna be one, is it gonna be a plus or a minus after the one? A plus, right? Minus. Uh, got plus and I got minus. You'd think it's a plus, but it's not. It's a minus because see that how that negative is in the parentheses? So those two negatives are gonna become a positive, but you still have a negative outside the parentheses. So it's gonna stay a minus, right? So it's minus 16 over nine, right? And now I need to find a common denominator, which will be nine over nine, right? Everybody good with me here? And then from there I subtract. And I've got this, right? Now this is what I was talking about. Complex fractions are gonna get kind of tricky and a lot of negatives, so you just need to learn how to be careful with this because it. Most of the mistakes here are just silly mistakes. If you've gotten to this point, the rest is just simple stuff, but a lot of places to make mistakes. It's not that it's difficult, it's just a lot of places to make mistakes. Dividing is the same as multiplying by the... Reciprocal. There you go, reciprocal, right? So this is negative eight over three times negative nine over seven. And then from here, you can multiply and simplify or simplify first and then multiply them. I usually simplify and then multiply so my numbers stay small. So I would have canceled that three with that nine, three goes into nine, three times, three times eight. So it's a 24 over seven, right? I'll give you a minute to write that down. Good. Everybody good? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Roberto. And Roberto found the icons. Find the icons on your menu so you can give me thumbs up, peoples. Can't see faces, can't hear voices. You're like, I'm talking to myself, I'm gonna cry. 
Thank you, Desenia, and Roberto, and Glenn, and all of you, and Nicole. All right. All right, we're good. Here we go. Moving on. Enough of Delgado crying. He's such a girl. Just kidding, girls. I don't want any mean messages about being a sexist. Aha, uh -huh. joke. Aha. Uh -huh. Almost got some people going talking. All right, so three forms of the double angle formula, okay? For cosine of two theta, there are three versions of this. Let's see. So we've got cosine of two theta, cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Cosine of two theta is equal to two cosine squared theta minus one. And we have cosine of two theta is equal to one minus two sine squared theta. So why do we have three? We have three because sometimes, uh, depending on what they're asking you to do, one may be more useful than another, okay? And you're gonna take a look at how that happens. Do we have to memorize them all? Yes, because some will be easy. If you plug in the wrong one, um, it may not help you in what you're trying to do. So you wanna think about what is it that I'm trying to do? What is it that I'm trying to get at? And which one's gonna be most useful to me? And yes, you'll be using them all, okay? So you want to make sure that you know these three so then you can apply them accordingly. If you apply the wrong one, you might have to take a whole bunch of steps. You might end up at the same place, but you'll go the long way about it. So the more you know, the less you have to do. Be a good mathematician. Not just lazy, but lazy for a purpose. Okay? So example two, here we're verifying the identity, right? It says... Verify that sine of three theta is equal to three sine theta minus four sine cubed of theta. We'll go ahead and write this down. And this is where it starts to get tricky. We're trying to verify. When, we, when we've been verifying identities, we always start with the side that looks what? Difficult or easy? The difficult one, right? Which one looks more difficult here, the left or the right? Right. The right seems like it's more difficult, right? And that's what I thought. The right would seem more difficult. I would want to try to go after that one. In the example, they actually went after the left side. And the re, and I'll tell you why. Because we're used to handling sine of theta uh, usually by itself, right? Not with a number in front. This one has a three in front, right? So that's what makes that side, the left side, more challenging. I wouldn't even know where to begin with that one. The one on the right, there are things I know that I can do, but I don't know how I'm gonna end up with a sine of three theta, right? It would just be kind of difficult, even though the right initially looks more difficult, and that's the way I tried to do it, and I got stuck, and then I had to stop and look at it more carefully, and I said, no, wait a minute, the difficult side here would be sine of three theta, because I wouldn't know how to do that. So I had to think the first step here is the hardest. So the hardest step here is to get started. After that, it's not that bad. There's a lot of work to do, but it's not that bad. Well, let's start off with the left side. So sine of three theta, well, what can I do? I don't know, I know nothing about sine of three theta, but I do know something about sine of what? Two theta. Sine of two theta, good, Gretel. I do know something about sine of two theta, right? So I can split this sine of three theta as two theta plus theta, right? So I'm gonna rewrite that sine of three theta as sine of two theta plus theta, right? And that is the hardest step here, getting that part done. The rest, you're gonna see that it just kind of falls into place. Well, sine of two theta plus theta, that seems familiar to me because before we did what? Sine of Alpha plus beta, what was that? Remember that? Wasn't that like um, sine of alpha, sine of uh, cosine of beta plus cosine of alpha, co sine of beta? There you go. Good job, Lan. You remembered, right? So now we apply this, now we're gonna apply this to what we have for two theta and theta, right? So this is why all of these, this is why I see Lance going, wow, I don't know how I remembered that, but I did. So that's what has, starts to happen after you do a bunch of these. It just starts to come to you automatically, right? So now we're gonna split that sine of two theta and theta into that, right? So we're gonna have 
sine of two theta, that's like our alpha, right? And then cosine theta, right? What comes next? So cosine two theta, right? No? Plus? Maybe. Because remember, I'm replacing, <laughs> yeah. right? I'm replacing. Right. Mm -hmm. So what's next? Plus what? Cosine two theta. Cosine two theta, good, Gretel. And then? And then sine theta. There you go, sine theta. Good job. Okay. Got it? Now it's starting to look bigger, but I'm getting to where I wanted to, right? I'm getting there. Not quite there yet. We're getting there. So let's see what we do now. I know something about this. We talked about this sine of two theta, right? Sine of two theta. What was sine of two theta? Sine of two theta was very good. Two sine theta. Cosine theta, good Roberta, right? Two sine theta, cosine theta, right? And what was cosine of two theta? Cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Very good. Let's see. We have several different options, right? Several different options that we can choose from. But the question is, which is the right one, right? Because we had three of them. You remember? We had these three. So of these three, which is the appropriate one that I'm going to use? Which one should I use? One, two, or three? Let's say this is one, this is two, and this is three. How would you know? How would you know? That's the question. That's an excellent question, Bruno. How would you know? Well, we got to go back and take a look at what we're trying to show here, right? This is the identity we're trying to verify, right? And notice all of these have what? What we're trying sign. to verify. Sign, right? Sign, okay? Mm -hmm. Take a look at the cosine of two thetas, which is the only one that has signs in it once I try to make it look like something else. It's Number three. Number three. Good job, Desenia. <laughs> number three. See, number three is the only one that has a sign, right? So if I have a cosine left in my equation, I want to get rid of it, and I want to make it a sign. So I'm going to use this one, right? I'm going to use that one. So I'm going to replace that with 1 minus 2 sine theta. So now I'm going to take those equations, and for sine squared theta, I'm going to put in 2 sine theta cosine theta, right? And for cosine of 2 theta, I'm going to replace that with 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. And now it's just a matter of multiplying and simplifying my stuff from here. Okay? So now I've got uh, 2 sine theta. What's cosine theta times cosine theta? That's going to be... It's going to be squared. There you go. <laughs> so that's right. Cosine squared theta. And then it's going to be plus. Now I need to distribute that sine, right? So 1 times sine theta is going to give me... Sine theta. Sine theta. And then I got to do the other one. Sine theta times 2 sine squared theta is going to give me... Cubed. Cubed, right? 2 sine cubed theta. And now simplify those bits, right? We need to simplify those bits. Let's see, I've got a cosine squared theta, right? I do remember this. I've, I've almost got what I wanted, but I still have a cosine squared, right? So that cosine squared was also part of this, right? The Pythagorean identity, right? So sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals... Who remembers the Pythagorean identity? Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta? Is it one? One, right? One, right? So if I want it in terms of sines, because remember, I'm trying to get rid of all the cosines, I would subtract the sine squared from both sides, right? So I would end up with cosine squared is going to equal what? 
So one minus sine squared theta. Good job, yeah. One minus sine squared theta, right? So I'm gonna take that cosine squared theta, right? And I'm gonna replace it with one minus sine squared theta. Got this, no? Make any sense? It makes perfect sense, but it's so hard. No, it's not. Vlad. It's it is not. really long. That's, that's it takes a while, yes. It is, it is very long because it takes a while to write all this stuff down. And then you're playing with, before you were playing with X and Y, now you're playing with trig functions and they look a little different. But it's going to feel the same in a little bit. The more you work with these, it's, it's going to feel the same. It's just going to be a lot of writing. All right, we're good with this one? Yes, no, maybe so? Let's see where we go from here, right? From here, it's just a matter of, I, that's just the same step from before. And now we just multiply, right? 2 sine theta times 1 gives us 2 sine theta. And then 2 sine theta times sine squared theta is going to give me what? Two sine cubed yeah. theta. Minus two sine cubed theta. Good job, Gretel. And then plus sine theta, I copy the rest down, right? And now it's just combining like terms, right? I have a two sine theta and a sine theta. That's going to be three sine theta. Good, Roberto. And then I've got a minus two sine cubed theta, minus two sine cubed theta. So that's going to be a Minus four. Minus four sine cube theta, right? Which is what I was trying to do. That means that my identity is verified. Not hard, just a little bit tricky at first because we're learning new things and applying them right away. Everybody good with that? We can move on. Just know maybe so. No thumbs up, no thumbs down, no I got it. Okay, I got a thumbs up over there. We got it. <laughs> we got it, we got it. Bunch of thumbs up, bam, 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 bam. Good night, all right, good, good job, good, good. All right, moving on. Here we go. I didn't get thumbs up from the other people, I guess, but I got to take this because I took this. All right, power reducing formulas, I love these because they kind of force you to do fractions, but they are so helpful. The idea of power reducing formulas is when you want to get rid of powers in trig functions. So these will help us get rid of those nasty, pesky powers in functions. So these are our power reducing formulas. So sine squared theta, anybody got that? If no, it's a red or have an idea what it is? Read it for us nice and loud. Okay, <laughs> so it's one minus two cosine theta over two, right? So notice you have an exponent, sine squared theta. Well, that's the same as saying one minus two cosine theta over two. You have cosine squared theta, which is one plus cosine of two theta over two. And then we have the tangent squared theta, which is, now this one you guys can do in your heads, right? Remember, sine is what? I'm sorry, tangent is sine over, tangent is sine over cosine. cosine. Good, very good, good Angelina. Sine over cosine, so what happens to those twos? They become the other one. What's going to happen to them if I have sine over cosine? They're going to do what? They're going to flip. They're going to cancel, right? So if I have, remember, tan, tangent, and this is why I don't write with this because my thing doesn't work so well. Tangent is sine over cosine.
So in this case, when I have this fraction over that fraction, those are going to cancel. So what do I have in the numerator? One. Well, one. minus two cosine theta. Good job. Good answer, Dina. Two, one, I see. And what do I have in the denominator? One plus cosine two theta. One plus cosine two theta. Good job. Cosine two theta. It doesn't look like a theta, but okay. We good with that? So those are our three power reducing formulas. Okay. Everybody got them down? You guys know maybe so? We move on. Oh, we only have 20 minutes. All right. Reducing the power of a trigonometric function, write an equivalent expression for it, sine of sine to the fourth of x that does not contain powers of trigonometric functions greater than one. So We've got to get rid of all the powers, right? Got to get rid of all the powers. So let's start off here, right? We got sine to the fourth of x. Well, I remember way back when there was a rule that said if I'm, I have a base and I have two exponents being multiplied together, uh, a power to a power, they do what was called the power rule, power to a power, you multiply, right? So I can also go the other way. I can split them apart. So four, what are the factors of four? You can do two and two. I can do two and two, right? So I can do two and two, right? So I can rewrite it like this. And that's something a little bit better because I don't know about anything as a sine to the fourth power, but I do know stuff about sine squared, right? So now what do I do? Well, I have to rewrite this and get rid of the powers. So I can use the what? I could have tried to do this, but I still have the same problem, right? They said to do what? It cannot contain power is greater than one, right? So that's not going to work. So what am I going to do instead? I need to use my, I need to use my reducing the power, reducing um, power, right? So I have to use my power reducing formulas, right? So what's the power reducing formula for sine squared of theta? It was one minus cosine theta. Right. One minus two cosine theta. Two cosine theta over two. Two. Over two. Over two. So now I'm going to replace that in there. Right? And again, from here it starts to get just like mostly it's going to feel a lot like algebra. What's in red, what you will see in red is mostly the stuff that goes on in your head, right? Or should be going on in your head, right? So from here, I remember this was also true, right? When I have a over b as a fraction to the second power, that's like saying what? A squared over? B squared. B squared. Yeah, you distribute that. over b squared, right? Oh. So the denominator is going to be easy because the denominator is a 2 squared, which is a? 4. 4, right? <laughs> The numerator is where it's going to get a little bit trickier because now, like I said, we're playing with some serious algebra here. It's mostly algebra, but we're playing with some algebra, right? So the question is, what that, does that become, right? And I remember that we can we did this, a minus b squared, way back when, right? Algebra 1, you did it, and in algebra 2, you did that, right? And that becomes what? Remember? a squared, and then it was what? Minus b squared. Just distribute the. the Not two. minus b squared because a squared no. minus b squared is a plus b a minus b, right? This is a minus b quantity squared. There's a middle oh, term in here, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So it's minus. Um, a yes. Minus two a b, right? And then minus b squared, or was it plus b squared? Who remembers? Don't Isn't remember? it plus when you have the, Absolutely. when it's a plus? Absolutely. It's yeah. a plus b mm -hmm. squared, right? Yeah. I put a minus by mistake. What did I get? So now we go from there. And it's going to say minus on the other ones, but ignore it. Because I don't want to write. Maybe it, it won't. Let's see. Maybe I can get away with it. 
So now we have what? One, right? One squared is one. And then we have two AB. So it's going to be two times one times cosine of two X. So it's going to be minus two cosine of two X. And then B squared, right? So it's going to be cosine squared of 2x plus cosine squared of 2x. You got it? So that's where that comes from. All right, it's getting better. Where do we go from there? Well, if you look at those, those are like three separate terms, right? You have one, then you have uh, minus cosine, two cosine of 2x, and then you have plus cosine squared of 2x, right? So we can split those apart very much like you have on top, if you remember that, right? So let's split those apart and see what happens. We end up with 1 fourth, right? Minus, now that 2 over 4 becomes a what? Just a 1, right? 2 over 4 is 1 over 2, right? 1 over 2, cosine of 2x, right? And then that last term is going to be plus there's a one there, even though we don't see it, right? So it's going to be one, four. One over four. four. Right, exactly. Good job, Christina. One over four cosine squared of two X. Okay. We're good. So we're down. We started off at a power of four. And now we only have one term with a power of two, right? So now what could I do to get rid of that power of two? Can you plug in, um, do the same thing we did with the, with the sine square, exactly. the reducing power? Exactly. Power reducing formula, right? We have a power reducing formula for cosine squared, right? So cosine squared theta is equal to what? What was that power reducing formula for cosine squared theta? 1 plus 2 cosine theta over 2. Very good. 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2. So I'm going to replace that for cosine squared of x. So notice everything stays the same, except in, in the parentheses, we're going to put in 1 plus cosine uh, 2 times 2x. Two because remember that 2x is our theta, right? That 2x is our theta, right? So it's 1 plus cosine of 2 times 2x two over 2. Does that make sense? All right, we're good. Yes, no, maybe so. And what do we do from here? The rest is just a little bit of algebra. algebra. Yeah, exactly. A little bit of algebra, right? So it's, I'm going to, that stays the same, but I need to do what here? Uh, one, the numerator is going to be the same, but I got to multiply the two times two, which is a four. And then four times two is eight on the denominator on the last term. And then now apply that to those. So 1 8 times 1 is 1 8. And then it's going to be 1 8 cosine of 4x. And then I have to combine like terms. The 1 4th and the 1 8, which is going to give me 3 8. And the rest is the same. Okay? So notice my answers aren't necessarily pretty, and they won't be anymore. You're done with pretty answers in math. Sometimes they'll be pretty. If you have a clever mathematician who wants to be clever, most of the time, don't expect them to be, okay? There's a lot of people who love to write these great big problems and the answer is always one or zero. So, I love to mess with people like that. All right, we're good with that? So funny, those math people. <laughs> All right. Half angle formulas, half angle formulas. So these are them. The sine of alpha over 2 is plus or minus the square root of 1 minus the cosine of alpha over 2. The cosine of alpha over 2 is plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine of alpha over 2. And tangent. Let's see if you can figure out tangent. Who wants to give it a go in your head? 
looks crazy, but it's not. But well, mister, like you gotta, um, what's it called? You gotta rationalize too. Right, but e even without rationalizing, what's gonna happen to those twos in the denominator? Let's square root of two in the denominator. Well, huh? They're gonna cancel, right? They're gonna cancel each other out, right? Because mm -hmm. this would end up being, let me see if it'll allow me to write here. This is like saying the square root of one minus cosine alpha. Oh, there we go with the crazy cosine alpha over the square root of two, right? And the same is true for this one over here. So those square root of twos in the denominators are gonna do what? They're gonna cancel. So what should I end up here with? I should end up with plus or minus this numerator over this is my denominator. Does that make sense? Kind of, sort of? Yeah. That's the way algebra works. Did you, did you say something, Gretel? You got it? Yeah, I got it. Okay. So that's my tangent of alpha over two. Good, just no, maybe so. All right, let's work some problems. We have time, I think, for one or two more. It says the plus or minus symbol in each of these formulas does not mean that there are two possible values for each function, okay? Instead, the plus or minus indicates that you must determine the sign of the trigonometric function, whether it's positive or negative, based on the quadrant in which the half angle lies. So the, it depends on the quadrant that your half angle lies. So in other words, is it the tangent for that half angle positive or negative in that quadrant and it's alpha over two so this is our example write down that example it says use cosine of 210 is equal to negative square root of three over two to find the exact value of the cosine of 105. so let's see how we do that well, the cosine of 105, cosine of 105, 105 is half of what? Two ten. Exactly, 210. Good, just saying it and others, right? It's half of 210, right? So it's half of 210. So that means I can use my half angle formula. Remember, half angle formula for cosine is plus or minus square root of Um, one one plus cosine right one plus cosine, cosine alpha over one minus that's tangent oh yes sorry two <laughs> two right mm -hmm. so now i can just plug in my values right i plug in my values cosine of 210 over two is the same as is equal to negative why negative Why not positive? Because it's negative square root of three over two. Uh, that's a good guess, but it has to do with what? What did they say in the statement? It has to do with what? It has to do with your half angle, right? So remember 105, 105 degrees ends up being here somewhere, right? That's 105 degrees. And if it's a, the What's, what would be the sign, the cosine in this, in this quadrant? This is quadrant two, right? So in quadrant two, what would that angle be? What would the sign be of the angle? It would be, remember all students take calculus, right? That means all are positive in the first quadrant, only sign is positive in the second quadrant, only tangent is positive in the third quadrant, and only uh, cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant. So since we're looking for cosine of 105, remember that's a half angle, right? That means this would be negative. Does that make sense? 
So that's why we have a negative right here. Yes, no? Mm? I'm getting a lot of mm. So that's why it's a negative here. Remember what, what they said earlier. Let me clear this up. See that last sentence? It says what? Based on the quadrant. And you might want to write this down. Based on the quadrant which the half angle lies. Right? Based on the quadrant which the half angle lies. Right? Our angle was 105, so it lies over here. This is 105 degrees. And we were looking for the cosine, oops, cosine of 105, right? So in this quadrant, in quadrant two, my cosine would be negative. So that's why it's a negative. Does that make sense? Very important. Right, because only sine is positive, so sine anything positive. else would be negative. Anything else would be negative. Make sense now? Mm-hmm. Okay. We move on. I know some people were confused about that, so let's go forward to where we were. And then I'll give you the formulas for tangents. Okay. Let's finish this problem here. So we've got this. So this is going to be 1 plus cosine of, what was our angle? 105. That's that's the angle over two is 105, right? But the angle that we're talking about is 210, right? Mm -hmm. so cosine of 210, right? Oh, okay. And now, well, cosine of 210, just as Jesenia said earlier, is negative square root of three over two, right? So that's a negative square root of three over two. From here, the rest is just algebra, cleaning up the algebra, right? So now we've got uh, that. We've got to rationalize, as somebody mentioned earlier, we have to rationalize. Like I said, we have to rationalize. Well, we're going to have to rationalize here, right? So we multiply it by a 1. If you notice, this is a 1, right? They're doing it under here. I wouldn't have done it like this, but they're doing it under the radical. I probably would have put it separate and made it its own step. But you get the idea. So you've got this, and the square root of 4 is 2. So notice, you've got the square root of 2 minus the square root of 3 over two, and it's negative, right? So notice your answers don't look so pretty anymore. Answers kind of look ugly. Everybody got this? You got about three minutes, which is enough for you to copy the tangent formulas. So we move on, everybody good, let me see here. All right, thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs sideways. Very right, excellent. Good. Eliana, is that you or is that your little sister? Cute picture. Sparkly. Maybe she can't talk. All right. We good? Just no, maybe so? All right. So these are your half angle formulas. Thank you all for the thumbs up, appreciate it. Uh, go ahead and write those down, okay? And they work the same way, okay? You're just gonna find the angle, they give you the half angle, and the more you work with them, the easier they get, okay? Like I told you, this stuff that's left, all of it is uh, relatively easy it, but it is new. That's the hard part. You just got to get used to working with it. Okay. The more problems you do, the easier it gets. So before you, people start logging off, because I know some of you have to go to other classes, let me take a quick pick of attendance for attendance. Uh, I got you all safe. Cheers. All right, gotcha. All righty, if you have any other questions or any other concerns, thank you, thank you, Joe. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed class today. You'll be back again. If you want to see the proof, I'll add a proof tomorrow. I don't know if we'll have time. I, I'll add it in there just in case I, I move a little quicker. 
tomorrow, but it's we're running right on crunch time. So uh, any questions, feel free to send them to me through uh, Gmail, any concerns, and uh, let me know, okay? Okay, thank you, Mr. Okay. Bye. If you guys want to stay, I'll be on for another hour if you guys want to stay on. If not, then bye-bye. Have a wonderful afternoon. Bye. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.